She listens to me. Until she doesn't, because she's right back. <laughs> This is a quick, light breakfast that I usually have. Muesli, I know some people don't like raisins. I personally do. Um, then quark. So if you're not German or haven't been to Little or anything like quark, is just basically uh, super high protein, low fat yogurt. And a good old fashioned cup of coffee. So. Uh, based on my last video and based on a bunch of feedback that I've been getting on Instagram not a lot of people actually know very much about me uh, outside of uh, videos with other people outside of my Instagram account which is just basically my physique um, so here's a little bit of introduction to myself uh, let's start it off with this my name my actual name is Michael Francis Joseph Smart yes not Mike the Saiyan and let's see i've been doing sports for about 20 years i say sports because it's varied from rugby general fitness um i dabbled in men's physique for a little bit because why not and now i'm in calisthenics and i've been focusing on calisthenics for a long time so one of the things that people don't actually know a lot about me is the fact that I'm in a perpetual state of injury. I think for the last 10 years now, I've been injured, currently dealing with uh, my back and shoulder. Shoulder's pretty, pretty messed up, as you can see. My bone is actually sticking out a little bit compared to my other shoulder bone. Uh, it's been like that for about three years now, but then again, I've I think this is where the name the saying comes from because I don't just I don't stop uh, as long as I can keep moving I will continue to move uh, I, that's at least what I believe is the idea of the saying around me at least I hope so so it went from in terms of sporting career we have rugby I started off with rugby which was you know heavy impact heavy weights uh, very very seriously taken um, as far as like all the sports that I've done in my life it was probably the most professional level then when I stopped playing rugby I went into CrossFit and in CrossFit there was like a natural fitness translation from rugby to CrossFit I enjoyed it but at the same time I didn't um, I started doing calisthenics from doing muscle ups in the park and some guy walked up to me and just said, hey, do you do street workout? And I had no idea what that was. And so he showed me a couple of videos from like the OGs, Hannibal for King, you know, people back in the day that you actually need to research on. And uh, I, I got hooked on it ever since then. So that was like the basis of my calisthenics career. That was, that was about 10 years ago now. So it's been, it's been a long time. As it stands, uh, I'm waiting to hear from a doctor about whether I need my shoulder operated on so if you see any like lack of performance increase and it's just basically because I can't keep my shoulder in socket which is kind of important when it comes to doing pan balancing and handstands and planches and whatnot so we'll see how that goes so after I finish eating my light breakfast today is just basically gonna be like a vloggy kind of day uh, day in the life of if you will uh, show you about you know kind of what I eat 
how I hydrate. Right now we're gonna go and do some mobility and general warm-up exercises so that when I do move around in the day I don't have any pain. Then we're gonna hit the park, try and hit a really hard training session there, and then get some food in again. It's all about those calories, bro. So, before we head to the park today, other than the fact that it's blisteringly hot outside and no one can physically train in this heat, otherwise you're gonna burn your hands off. Um, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of mobility. Well, in general, just some rehabilitation work because of the injuries that I got. So I have, <laughs> I got quite a few injuries under my belt, but the ones that are really concerning for me right now, the ones that I have to pay attention to every single time I train are my shoulder, but more importantly, the longest lasting and unfortunately the injury that will never go away, my back. So for those of you who don't know, I had a back operation about three years ago. About three years ago, way more than three years ago now. Six years ago. But it took me two years to recover and then unfortunately doing something silly, which was picking up the fan and to taking a picture with him. A kid, by the way, this wasn't just like me picking up a grown man and taking a picture with him. I picked up a kid and uh, put him on my shoulder and in doing so my hernia popped back out. So ever since then I've been back on that super careful looking after my back run. Uh, anyways, what we're going to do now is, what I'm going to do is a little bit of what I would generally do before I work out, especially if I'm not feeling too great, like if my back is not feeling too hot, I'm feeling a little bit of sciatic pain going down my legs. Uh, just mobility work, stretching, a lot of adductors, a lot of hamstring work, a lot of deep hamstring stretches. So we're talking about like raising your legs up here, making sure you feel that almost painful sensation that goes down your leg. That's actually a, called a dental floss. So a bunch of that. And yeah, once we're all warmed up and ready to go, out to the bar. Seeing as this is not a deep stretch session, we're not going to be holding any of these stretches for too long, otherwise that's actually going to be working against your workout. So these mobility sessions, holds are about 3-4 seconds each, with a bit of movement going on each time, and don't be afraid to move. Don't be afraid to move around, get the blood flowing everywhere possible. And now on to that dental floss stretch. So this is actually really helpful for most Cali athletes, I would say, due to the fact that we work our lower back so much and then not focusing on our glutes or anything like that, a lot of people are going to be feeling that pain like right there, in that area right there, that tightness, have you ever pushed yourself right there and gone, ow, that hurts. That's actually your nerve, believe it or not. That's just because your nerve is basically right there. We lack glute, uh, the glute strength, overcompensate with lower back strength, so now we kind of have this like compensation problem going on, and usually what happens is lower back pain, and if it's worst case scenario, something like me, where you end up having a hernia. So, one really good stretch for that, and it's actually a good test of your flexibility. If you're not already stretching, which, stretch guys, like do your stretches, because you will regret it later in the future if you don't do your stretching and keep your mobility up and just keep hammering away at the training. 
I am a perfect case example of that because I probably would not be a third of the injuries that I have would probably be gone just by stretching and keeping that mobility up. What you want to do is you want to get a platform, place your feet on the platform, excuse all the dog hairs. She's also having a bit of a heat thing going on right now. And they're right, baby. And with your, well, usually speaking, you're going to have like a bit of a ramp so that your feet are stable on the floor. But if you don't have that, just putting your toes on a platform so that your feet are at an up angle, then hinging your hips as much as possible. So that idea of, you know, when you go into a squat, skip your, stick your ass up. From there, trying to keep your back as straight as possible. You won't be able to go very far until you start feeling something. Like right now, I'm already feeling the stretch going down here. And the difference here is that the feeling you get is going to be kind of uncomfortable. It's not like a traditional stretch where it's just like, ah, I'm stretching. No, this is one of those deep stretches where you're like, ow, why am I doing this? So once you find that point, just maintain that position, maintain that hinge in the hips. Danny, nothing wrong, baby. <laughs> it's okay, baby. And slowly, slowly lower yourself. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, that is probably one of the most useful stretches I have for the most Cali athletes out there, especially people who do planching. Uh, try and do an elevated. Bless you. Try and do an elevated hamstring stretch, focusing on the form. Form is always key in this, even in stretches, which is actually kind of weird if you think about it, because you can do this and have your back bent completely and just slouching over like that. And yeah, sure, you'll feel the stretch over here. Yeah, sure, you're going to be stretching, but you're actually not going to be increasing your flexibility or range of motion in a good way. All you're doing is kind of just bending over. So just like you would with a push-up, a pull-up, or anything in Cali where form is key, stretching, form is key, because you're actually going to get what you want out of that stretch, rather than just an uncomfortable sensation while you bend over or pull your leg up. Alright, so just to finish up, here are the rest of the movements that I'm going to be doing, while I usually do to warm up. Alright guys, so we are at the park, new park by the way, I've never been to this park and I am anything but unsatisfied, I mean this place is absolutely perfect, it's closed off, there are not many people, I did just say that with a massive group of kids coming this way so <laughs> let's just pretend like the massive group of kids is not a regular thing that happens. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so today we're going to be hitting more of a back workout. Last time was more of a push workout. I'll be doing some front lever exercises because that's kind of like an exercise that I really want to focus on right now, especially the touch grip. Give some advice on that. But before that, So, as I was saying, um, before we get into the workout, I do really want to quickly make a point on the food that I was eating before and what I ate now, because it might not look like it, but it's around about seven, eight o'clock right now. So, the food I ate before and what I generally speaking will eat is gonna be very high calorie, low volume, high density food, right? The idea is, is that Calisthenics in general, my personal opinion, when it comes to like how to appropriately diet for calisthenics, definitely want to go for similar diets to the long endurance athletes. So that can be anything from keto to paleo to, I don't know, whatever fits your, your, your style. Because there's so many different styles of eating. Me personally, I mix a bit of keto into a mix of fasting. So I'll spend periods without eating, then I'll have high density, calorie foods, healthy fats, healthy proteins, and then after I work out, I'll mix in the carbs in there just for the recovery process and to keep those gains. So, onto the workout. Today's gonna be pretty simple. Like I said, front lever, pull-ups, muscle-ups, not trying to complicate things, keeping it effective, and definitely gonna get our bucks worth. All right, guys, here we go. So before we get into the workout, I'm gonna do a brief warm up. Mostly just pull movements on an easier scale using the band and my body weight. That's pretty much it. Flies, I think this is probably like one of the biggest staples in gymnastic warming up. You get your biceps, shoulders, chest, everything starts to activate. All right, now that we've warmed up, we're gonna move on to probably the most technically difficult thing to do, which is gonna be the touch grip front lever. This is already a very advanced move for many people. So in general, the idea is that you're gonna go for the highest skill level that you're at. For me, it's the touch grip. So starting off the training, we're gonna put the most intense move that we have first. Not necessarily going for high volume, just efficiency in how many reps we do. Making sure that even if it's four, five sets of five seconds, that those four, five sets of five seconds are gonna be more effective than, I don't know, 20 minutes of bad position, front knee, even holding. So we're starting off with the close grip. Then we'll be moving on to muscle ups after a little bit of a break. Again, focusing more on technique, Explosive strength, quality, 
and then after that we'll be moving on to the rep based stuff which are going to be hitting our biceps better they're going to be hitting our lats better focusing on muscle development and then really kind of like hitting that failure at the end of the workout after the workout food. all right now i'm actually unlike what i usually do i'm not going to be talking much uh this is going to be more of a follow along workout because you know just like everyone else i got to focus on my workouts too this one in particular front lever has actually been one of the hardest things for me to learn ever so you know focus when it's needed and yeah so time to follow me along on this one Okay, so while I'm doing my video right now, one of the biggest beasts in Cali in Valencia just showed up, and this is what I mean. Literally just shows up, and what? Whoa! What? What? <laughs> Oh, my boy. Like, he just saw my story right now, uh, filming. He came up to say hi. He's an absolute sweetheart, but he's also an underground secret. So, yeah, well, I'm pretty happy that this kid is in Valencia rapping. Should I try it? Okay, now I've done touch with no assistance. I'm gonna move on to doing front levers with a band. So basically, just like lowering the level a little bit, focusing on front lever, and then moving on to muscle up. Alright, now we've done front levers, we're going to be moving on to muscle ups and then reps until we burn out. So here's a really good bit of advice for beginners, anyone who's actually learning the muscle up. Everyone's obsessed with the muscle up when it comes to just going up and down, up and down, because that's what it looks like at the highest level, bam, boom. It's a really simple looking movement. The reality is, is that when you're learning it, the first step is actually doing a seat. So what you want to try and do is get the bar, swing, and then put your weight on top of the bar. Like literally you're trying to, it's almost as if you're trying to climb a fence. That same kind of like gesture. Now, when you've learned to get your body weight on top of the bar, that's when you can start learning how to do the muscle up. Repeating that motion, cleaning it up, cleaning it up, and eventually that C becomes an I. And you just go up, down, up, down, and then it becomes an exclamation mark because it looks freaking insane. And everyone who sees you goes, what the hell? So that's a really good advice for beginners. Get used to putting your body on top of the bar and then start refining that movement. Thank you. 
I don't know if they're working, so we will call text forty. Maybe it's a learning, maybe it's cause life is a lot to be built on the normally. Sometimes it's British and sometimes it's poverty. Like I said, failure. All right, so, like I said before, reps until failure. Currently, I'm pumped to the extent where I can't even touch my shoulders. So, I can't even perform a proper rep right now, but I still have the energy left in me to do something. Even if it's easier, just something more. I've got more in my tank right now. So what I'm gonna do is, go down to the easiest level of resistance. I'm going to take the resistance band and focus on isolating my lats because my arms burn out before my lats could. And I really wanted to work my lats today with all the front lever exercises, and muscle ups, etc. So right now we're going to do banded rows from a slightly higher position so that when we're contracting and pulling down, we're really forcing it down into the hips using our lats to bring the band down which kind of is replicating that front lever and then that's it for us so for this one I'm actually not going to focus on reps I'm literally focusing on muscle isolation and muscle connection so I'm going to set myself a 30 second timer 30 second timer when that goes off I then disconnect and I stop thinking about the reps until that timer goes off I'm only thinking about muscular contraction and squeezing that muscle as much as can
That's it, guys. <laughs> so, like I mentioned before, all my calories are now carbs are now going to be focused after this workout. I'm going to refill my glycogen tanks, refill my water tanks as well because hydration is absolutely key right now. And like I mentioned before, hit the notification bell, guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And yeah, stay tuned for more workout videos at the park with the same. Peace.